Hey everyone, today we've got something really interesting. We're gonna work on this 1952. 1952 Chevy four-door deluxe. Yeah, Styline Deluxe. All right, so my brother Richard bought this car. Um, yep, bought off auction. Uh, clearly gonna go to the junkyard um, and we, we rescued it. So he's obviously done a lot of work. He's got it running. And what we're gonna do today, you'll see this rear bumper. We've already done this. And if you wanna see the video for, for how we got this metal look to the rear bumper, um, you wanna go to his channel, which is R What the Rust. You wanna tell us about what you do on that channel? Yeah, we do rescues of old cars. So we find old cars abandoned in fields or the owner is elderly and can't fix them anymore or you name it and we get them running for the owners. Once in a while we buy one and that was the case with this, but typically we travel out to people's places and get their cars running for them. So I've had the pleasure of being here um, a couple of times where we worked on some of these and these rescues are not easy. You're out in the woods sometimes, you're out in a field. I mean, there's snakes, there's bugs. Sometimes it's really cold out <laughs> as, as I've seen in some of his videos. But fortunately today, we actually get to work in the garage. So we did the rear bumper as an experiment um, because we wanted to see what it was gonna look like. To me, I think it looks really good. You'll note the bumper bolts are not painted, but um, from your five foot distance, it looks very similar to the way this paint came out. You'll recall, this is my infamous uh, dark steel Rust-Oleum that I used on the Westinghouse fan blades. But here's an example of what we're up against. So here's what we're gonna work on today, which is, I think, the more interesting, this is the face of the car. And, uh, whew. So you got, the chrome is pretty much gone. Um, it's about as rough as you can get chrome to look, right? Yeah. So we're going to hit it with a uh, uh, DA at with 40. We'll start on this with 40. This probably not. This is pretty smooth. We'll probably try 120 on that. Yeah, the grill is, is a little bit better. Yeah. We're obviously not going to do any of the stainless. Yeah. And it'd be nice, you know, maybe we can save these. We'll have to look at that and see if we can save those. It would be nice if those were still chrome. Yeah, most of the chrome is here. Even these, the, the uh, bumperettes aren't bad. This yeah. piece is bad, but these, these I think are so. How is it on that side? Not so great. Not so great. <laughs> but we may be able to save them and leave them chrome. That would probably look pretty cool. Actually. Yeah, a little accent. Yep. All right, so. That's our task for today. Let's get busy. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is something that I actually learned from Richard's channel, is I usually use steel wool and water to clean metal and, and polish up chrome, but he actually uses aluminum foil and water. So what you do is you get it wet, and then you just rub the aluminum foil on it, which makes a, an aluminum oxide paste, which helps get the rust off the chrome and polish it. And we're hoping we can save these. This one that I started on was not bad at all. This guy's a little worse. So we'll try the light. It's not bad. This guy is significantly worse. I don't know if we're gonna be able to save it. Oh, I've seen him work miracles with this trick. See that? It actually took, we went from looking like that to looking almost respectable. All right, so Richard, take a look. See if this is the way you want to go. I think it looks pretty good. This side versus how bad it was. Yeah, yeah, I think we can, we can do that. That'll be a nice contrast. I'm gonna need more aluminum foil for that. 
So we're going to save the teeth. It just means more masking. All right, so I'm going to pause the camera and work on the rest of these. Then we're going to have to fire up the sander and hit this. And we'll be back. Okay, so we had a little bit of a change of plans. I'll show you what we did real quick to recap. Christina wanted us to try the bright metal on the bumper and she really liked it. So that actually makes our lives a lot easier up front now. So now we don't have to worry about trying to really save the chrome on some of these pieces. So lights are off because we're gonna be running the DA and we don't wanna blow the breaker. So Richard's gonna fire that up and uh, get to work. We've got a hole in the grill here that we're going to patch. So what we're gonna do is, is you've got a body hammer? Right. He's gonna use a body hammer to get it level and then we're gonna use my JB weld patch trick. actually can sit right where we want it to. I think we can do a little better with this edge still. You got most of it, but this one tip. All right, we used a hammer and a punch and got it pretty smooth. So now we're gonna mix up some JB Weld. And if you don't know the process, I'll show you again. Pretty easy. Just use equal amounts of this epoxy. Stir them together until they become kind of a uniform medium dark gray. black here is watery. Okay. So once you can't, can't really see the swirls in it anymore, it's ready to go. On repairs like this, I like to apply it with a paintbrush. put more than we need because we will be sanding it after. It's pretty hot out, so I would expect it'll dry fairly quickly. So this chrome here is just too pitted to think that tin aluminum foil will do anything. So I'm just gonna hit it with the DA and 40 grit get it down to bare metal and we'll take it from there.
go, but feel the difference. Oh, yeah. All right, let's let the tank fill up. All right, it's starting to look good. We've gone 40 grit with the DA all over everything. We've gone 60 with the orbital. We actually hand sanded in all these areas for the teeth and how you, we couldn't get the sanders in place. You can see the copper coming through. Our JB Weld fix actually worked really well. Did it dry? It's pretty much dry. It's a little sticky still, but it filled it. So we're gonna go over with it next. You got, what are you going on, 150? And 220, yep. They're gonna do 150, 220, and then prime it, and then uh, paint it. So we're gonna hit it now, and uh, we'll be back. Look at that. Yeah, if, the, if, if all of the trim was in the shape this is in, as opposed to pretty much gone, um, we probably would have chosen to just sand this yeah, down and then the clear color. it. That is pretty sweet. Yeah, it would be a really nice finish that way. Yep. But we asked Christina about doing that and she was negative, so. All right, looks like we're done sanding. We just went over with 220. We're going to... Uh, and 400. Oh yeah, and 400. Um, we're gonna blow the dust off and then mask up the whole front of the car and then prime it. We're gonna let the black primer get into these spots behind the chrome and then we'll do a second masking job before we actually spray the chrome onto it. That's looking good. Get in these parking lots more. Just gonna wipe it down with acetone. So this is an important step because even though we sanded it quite a bit, there could still be oil residue somewhere. And even a sander, like a DA, will throw some oil as it uh, spins. And as we know, oil will mess up our paint. But the primer should be a good indication. When we spray the primer, it'll, it'll let us know if we've uh, got oil somewhere better to see it bubble in the primer than in the paint. stuff really is only good for one use, this plastic. Yeah. Because once it gets dust on it, the dust tends to stick to it, and you can't take to it anymore. Oh, it's like static? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I wonder if it's manufactured that way, so you got to buy more. Makes sense. Yep. They make a paper version of it. I used it. I was making this for. Yep. I just happened to find this in the state sale, so I grabbed it. All right, we are fully masked. I mean, we got the bumperettes, which we're not going to try to coat because the chrome was good, but the rest of it, we are. And we're gonna do a coat of primer. We're gonna use the Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. So let's hit it. And again, I don't wear gloves when I paint because sometimes your glove, if you got a rubber glove, it can hang over the tip and uh, cause the paint to drip. You don't need to do a very heavy coat of this stuff, just enough to ensure that it seals it and then that the paint will actually stick. And for this, we are gonna prime in here, in these areas here. We're not gonna paint in there, but might as well just make it black instead of rust colored. Mm -hmm. Nope, you can do it. <laughs> I got a little bit left. As long as I've got it, the can pointing straight on. So I can get in here. Too empty to do anything but straight on right now. Put on, vote, empty. A good rule of thumb. When you're painting, you try to paint at least one coat from every angle possible. Because you never know where you're gonna miss. This is primer, so not as important. But you'll see that's exactly what we're gonna do when we paint. Oh, you got it. All right. You got it. All right, so this stuff, this takes a little longer to dry than regular automotive primer. We're gonna give it about a half an hour, which is a good opportunity to cool off. Yeah. Because it is 87 out. All right, Richard cleaned up the parking lights as best as we could do it. So we're gonna hit these now. What I always say is hit it from every angle because you never know what spot you're going to miss.
be very interesting to see how the silver goes over these. These are pitted, man. All right, we're all primed. One of the steps in getting a, a bright chrome-like finish, from what I've always read, is you have to have gloss black under it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the gloss black under it just because we want Christina to see how it looks. Let's see if she prefers this. All right, the gloss black is on, it's tacky, it's not completely dry, obviously it's only been about 20-25 minutes. So we're going to hit it with the chrome, bright metallic, we're going to see how the finish comes out. Let's do the stop off first. a lot like stainless steel. It does. Wow, that looks really cool. It looks like stainless steel. So part of the trick here is you kind of have to put a lot of thin coats on until you get a heavy coat. You don't want to put a heavy coat on it. You'll see how it'll gradually fill it in itself in, and then the gloss will come out of it. Yeah, I noticed that. It's not typical paint, is it? I don't know. You know, I have limited experience with this stuff, but it is impressive. I just don't know the durability of it. But look at that. Look at how shiny that is. Yeah, it's very shiny. It's not as good, obviously, on some of the areas that are pitted. Forget that bar behind everything. Which? This bar here. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, getting black in there is not gonna be fun at all. Oh, you got it. Yep, you got it. Again, my rule, try to hit it from all angles.
All right, bumper. Yep. Stan's getting a little tired, but I may have enough for the bumper. You know, for as rough as this section is, the paint's doing a pretty good job. Yeah. I'm gonna get the other can ready. Yep. Oh yeah, much better. watch it too, you know when you've got the right amount of gloss on it because it suddenly shows up. It's not like as it dries you're like, did I get enough on there? No, you can see it. Like right there I can see that don't have quite enough. I don't know how well this is coming through on camera, but it looks amazing. I mean it's it looks like stainless steel. It's amazing. I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Any other tips? Nope. I mean, it's pretty good stuff. Let's see how it dries. Now, the parking lights over here, this is going to be our durability test because with a lot of chrome paint, um, after you've got this great finish on it, and then when you have to touch it, the finish comes off, even if it's been drying for days. So this is going to be our test because this technically is not chrome paint. No. It's just called bright metal. So we'll see because we're going to have to mount those in and we'll see because we'll have to handle them. We'll see how well the chrome lasts, but pretty good. I mean, look at that. Yeah. From a distance, it's incredible. It really is. <laughs> it really is. That, that black. That black is what did it. Yeah. You know, the rear bumper doesn't have the black under it. It made a huge difference. Yep. Gloss yep. black. You can see as soon as you hit it on top of the gloss black, it just brightens right up. So true. All right. All right, that's it. Let's wait for it to dry. It turned out much better than I thought. I like it. Good, you did a good job, Matt. Yeah, this this top bar. Yeah, it's almost perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, where I the? I went right here too. 
Yeah, where the metal wasn't pitted, mm -hmm. it, it came out awesome. Yeah. That's great. All right, it's about three hours later. Paint's all dry. We're gonna demask the car and see what it really looks like. All right, here it is. We haven't done the black yet, but the chrome is done. All right, that's it. I think it came out fantastic. The Rust-Oleum Bright Coat did far better than I expected. And this was really the first time I've ever used it. It looks amazing. Way better than I even expected. It actually doesn't look like a painted bumper. No, no. And the jury's out. In fact, we were just discussing if we think the black gloss coating that we put under the front gave us better results than what we got on the back. And it really does, for some reason, look like it did add yep. a much more actual chrome-like look to it. Yep. But hey, so uh, I'm about to head back to Florida. So I just want to say thanks. Thanks, man. Had a great time. We got Same. a lot of good projects done. And hey, if you want to tackle something like this, you've got an old bumper, it's all rusty. Don't be intimidated. Just go out, get busy, take care.